All right, hey guys, um, Ali here, and in this video, I'm having a little interview with my friend Miguel Garcia, who works as a mechatronics, robotics, electrical engineer of uh, some sort. Yeah, mechatronics service engineer. Okay, basically automation. A lot of automations involved. Yep. Right, but you graduated with an electrical engineering degree. Correct. Okay. Cool. Um, we were we were classmates. We were classmates. We were classmates. We were lab we mates. We suffered in the same labs. We suffered in the same labs. <laughs> and we had the same uh, senior design project. Yes. Yeah, which was awesome. Uh, so yeah, in this video, we're just going to chit chat about electrical engineering, mm -hmm. robotics, mechatronics, automations, life, hardware, software, life, <laughs> a lot of that as well. Um, but yeah, man, I'm just going to just, I don't know. I mean, I introduce you in a very mm -hmm. crappy way. Just introduce yourself. Like, what, what did you study? Your first job, second job, blah, blah, blah. Yep. What do you do? All that. Um, My name is Miguel Garcia, as Ali said. I've studied electrical engineering at the University of Buffalo alongside this bright young man. <laughs> <laughs> um, after school, um, for some reason, I didn't find a job right away. Which is very common, by the way. Yeah. Surprisingly, you know. Um, I guess it just depends on the look, but I did find one company that contracted me to do service engineer work. So traveling and it's involved manufacturing again, automation machines mm -hmm. doing repetitive movements. Uh, but I was manufacturing food. I did that for a year and then I found this job. What's, Bausch, the, name, what's the name of your company? It's called Bausch and Schrobel. Bausch and Strobel. Strobel, yeah. Strobel. Oh, I don't know how to it. <laughs> I say it wrong all the time. Yeah, I say it wrong too. My, awesome. my German colleagues, since it's a German okay. company. And is it an automation company? Like they build robotic they build, Again, products? they build machines. Okay. So Like what kind of machines? So it ranges. So okay. again, it's manufacturing, uh -huh. high production of pharmaceutical. So that involves syringes, vials. Those are the two big machines that this company makes. But they also make labeling machines, washing machines, um, oh, cool. disinfecting machines. Okay. Through heat. Which involves, like, obviously, mechanical structures, hardware, and software. Correct. Those are the big three things. Yeah. And oh. where I'm at, I work a lot with uh, mechanical and electrical stuff. Okay. Um, a lot of the, mechan the newer mechanical stuff is involves a lot of electronics. Mm -hmm. So that's why my company has me doing a lot of work with the newer machines. Do you know what kind of electronics, like sensors, actuators, like all um, those lights? <laughs> oh, really? Yep. Okay. Keep, keep naming them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. List of electronic components. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. 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 So we have the sensors to tell the software to, to give, to tell the PLC. Yeah. Uh, you Which know. P PLC is programmable logic, some circuit, something, right? What, what is a PLC? Let's Google it real quick. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right, let's Google it. <laughs> PLC. Um, I think PLCs are used in, like, automations, right? Yeah, it's the brain of the machine. PLC. Programmable logic controller. Controller. Is a ruggedized... What the hell is that word? Ruggedized. Is a ruggedized computer used for industrial automation. And those looking... Hold on, let me share my screen so the audience looks at what we're looking at. Uh, so this is a PLC, allegedly. Looks like this. <laughs> are, are these what they look like at work? Yes, that's yeah. how they look like. They kind of look like servers, almost. Like there's. Uh, yeah, they do. I mean, Ethernet they use cables. they use a lot of Ethernet for communication. So for, what, what do they communicate? So this is communicating with the actual machine. Yes. Oh, so oh. our Ethernet communicates whether with a bunch of different, either with the machine yeah. or with the safety circuit. Um, yeah. But it in is. short, it's to communicate the different systems of the machine to the brain, which is the yeah. PLC. Wow. Yeah, so this is actually really cool. This is, right here, this is a safety. This uh, one? Yeah, it's a safety PLC. Damn, so like, what are these like inputs? Are these IOs? Are yep. These buttons? Yep, all hard wired IOs. Oh, wow. Yep. So That's typically nice, those are nice tip, LCD screen tip, Typically these are all filled up with, oh, okay. <laughs> with can you, wires. Can you, can, you can you charge your phone in this? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Yeah. Okay, and this is an Ethernet for communication? For communication. Yep. Okay, cool. That's awesome, man. Oh man, these things look like Legos. That's so cool. Uh, I mean, so, a lot of our a yeah. lot of our components they look like they look like Legos or toys, but yeah, yeah, yeah. but very important stuff, huh? But do, do you guys build these or do you use these? We use these. So okay. we, since our company is German, we have a lot of uh, 
German electronic companies we work with, uh -huh. and we buy their components and we put them into our machines. Okay, cool. cool. So essentially, we're like Lego building the machines, yeah, um, and then selling them and then producing. So that's why I'm here, actually. Yeah, you're actually visiting LA, right? Yep, I have a, a job not too far away from here on one of the newer machines. And the newer machine has a robot. Then we're gonna do some uh, some mechanical replacement and some electronic uh, adjustments to oh, wow. it. So I'm only here for one day, unfortunately. Yeah, I wish I, know, I could be here longer. No, it's actually a good thing they were here for just one day. <laughs> <laughs> I got I gotta get back to work tomorrow. <laughs> right, back back into the zone. Yeah, we we used to we studied abroad together in Spain, and we had a wild six months. Yep. Work hard, play hard. That's, like, my, yeah, that's my philosophy. Yeah, yeah so. absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, dude, how's life as an electrical engineer? Like, well, before we jump into that, talk me a bit about your degree, like your electrical engineering degree. Mm -hmm. You said So you did first two years in uh, Hudson Valley, right? In Albany, can you call it? So, yeah, I'm from Albany, New York, mm -hmm. the capital of New York. Many people probably don't know that, but small city north of New York City. Uh -huh. um, I did two years there because a combination of having no idea what I wanted to do yeah, and not wanting to spend a lot of money trying to figure it out. So, so do you think community college is a good option if you're like a high schooler and you don't really know what you want to do with your life? Definitely, definitely, because they give you a lot of different options yeah. and the commitment is not too deep because for me, it was near my house, so I didn't have to pay for housing um, and tuition was affordable very affordable and you got a lot of uh government help so yeah and this was this was uh for context this is in albany new york right correct so this is albany new york somewhere on the map in the united states <laughs> uh yeah, yeah so, so i was then, i was there about like 12 hours ago <laughs> okay yeah and then, and then but then you went to school here in buffalo right this is where we yeah, met yeah 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 and now, and now where are we right now uh now we're here we're in uh, pasadena <laughs> <It's deep. laughs> Yeah, we're actually here. I should not zoom in so people don't know right. Um, oh. <laughs> um, but okay, cool. So then how is that? Like, how is the transition from community college to electrical engineering? And, and what were like those junior year, senior year? Um, like in the transition, the transition was a little, little rough. I think engineering wasn't, I never thought I was going to do this, to be honest. But I guess mm -hmm. my advisors, they told me this is kind of where my brain was. I don't yeah. know. I don't know the best way to explain it. They saw my test scores for physics, for example, my high school test scores, and it was yeah really high, one of the highest. So, and then I did take some engineering courses in high school, just because I don't know. I had an advisor who put me into it. Yeah. So it was kind of just, it just kind of just happened. And did you did you like those engineering classes? I did. Yeah. 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 I learned a lot. I had some really good teachers that didn't focus too much on, um, and intensity of like math and stuff it was and like actually more application. explained applications yeah yeah, more yeah application stuff so yeah it's very important you mention that because a lot of viewers are very frustrated because when they hear physics or they hear engineering all they think of is like like the uh, theoretical stuff. yeah like i don't know no as engineers we're we're all about the application of f things discovered in physics yeah like this is what people like imagine you know like I mean, we have we have to take those classes, yeah, right? But like, um, but that's that's not but like life. you you move on from that. Like, this yeah. is important because it like teaches you, yeah, uh, ostia the normal force. <laughs> 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 yeah, like this is important because like it teaches you how to solve problems and yeah. isolate variables and yeah. think about it. But you're not going to be doing this forever. Like yeah. later on, you'll move on to like what Miguel is doing, which is this. Or if you're way cooler and you're like me, like, <laughs> uh, you work on something like this, you know, some crazy shit. But yeah, um, as engineers, it's not so much about the theory, it's the application of the theory. So for example, it's like one thing I've learned on this job is we have a lot of basic, I call them basic, yeah, photo eyes or sensors. And one sensor, I think I mentioned earlier, when yeah, we were talking, but it measured the opaqueness of a container, for example, we have glass oh, containers, so specific. very specific. So yeah. we needed like a certain uh, opaqueness, I guess. And there was so we have um instruction manuals and the theory behind the laser and it's you know i can understand it but i'm applying it so that that's the thing so the physicists you know they find yeah, yeah they yeah. find all that crazy stuff and yeah. as an engineer it's like how can i use this to i don't know apply it into a system let's say for me it's 
manufacturing, high production. How can I use this as? Yeah, like the physicist invests and in, in, in invents some kind of like magnetic field exactly. effect yeah. that becomes a sensor. Yeah. And the engineer like just builds it and like plugs it in and like turns it on, you know? <laughs> so the engineer uses it in an application and the physicists, you know, we need them. They come up with the yeah the work behind yeah. it, the magic behind, the magic how, this, behind it. how the sensor yeah. works. So. Or you could also be like like a electrical engineering researcher, like at the interface of like physics and uh, um, like real world engineering. Yeah, and, kind of... and there's a lot of in-between stuff. I'm yeah. almost in an in-between stuff because I do help with, um, so right now I'm in between the full engineer, which is, you know, drawing up, um, how do you say? Like diagrams and schematics and things like that? Exactly. Okay. And then actually working with them. Okay. So, so are they less hands-on? Cause they're kind of zoomed out and they're kind of doing big picture stuff? On the, on the, how do you say? The development side, yes. Okay. The R and D, you know, that's more theoretical, not theoretical, but it's more hands off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you yeah. said, and then you have the techs who are very hands on. Yeah, you're and in the I'm, middle. I'm right in the middle. I'm the connector. You're like an applications engineer, right? Like you're kind of get deployed to go make sure. Yeah, I guess are... the funny thing about engineering is like you could put. Yeah, you could put, you whatever put like anything in front yeah, of yeah, it. Yeah. So, I just say I I, I work with machines. Um, I work hands on, and I also work with uh, redesigning through my inputs to uh, you know the R and D team. Oh, cool! Very cool. So, how um, how how stimulating or interesting would you say your job is? Like, do you get? You, I say you, it's very stimulating. It depends on the work I do. So the work yeah. I'm doing while I'm in LA, I was actually really excited about because it's I'm working with one of the robots that are found in our machines. Um, it's a six-axis robot working with transporting, and it's doing a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, but it's just you know that's something that's it's, it's cool. I think, I think it's very important because it's, I'm learning. Yeah. And how, how, learning is very important to me. Okay. So t talk about that. Like, like a lot of people think, Oh, you get the degree, you graduate and then you just get a job and whatnot. But like, no, are you actively learning new things? Always, always. I think a big thing that I like about my job where it comes back to stimulation is troubleshooting. Yeah. Nothing's more stimulating than troubleshooting or frustrating also but rewarding once you get it done yeah the yeah. reward is insane it's yeah it's like debugging it in software like exactly it's, it's very annoying but the moment you you, you find it yeah you find the yeah the bug. and me i'm debugging in irl i guess yeah <laughs> sometimes it could be a software issue software, yeah but if it gets to that point i have to talk to the that's program. kind of something that's interesting what you do it sounds like you're doing again like mechanical work electronics work mm -hmm. software a little bit right mm -hmm. a little bit i'm trying to get more into it yeah so how, like how do you how, did you did you take software classes in college what, like what did you kind of learn on the job um, electrical engineer we had to take uh programming courses yeah like so. embedded systems and like c plus plus yeah c plus plus matlab lots of matlab yeah although some people claim matlab is not a real programming language <laughs> you can screw off because matlab <laughs> is for definitely a programming language <laughs> Um, yeah, you have functions and you have yeah, you have variables yeah. and you have functions yeah. and you yeah. click run and some computation takes place. Yeah. That's a programming language, right? Te technical, highly technical computer science majors <laughs> yeah, are, like, right. are going to be very angry with me right <laughs> now. No, that's that's something I love uh, messing around with computer science majors is they're like no, technically a language has to compile and do. And I'm like, if you write variables and functions and click run, that's a programming language to me. <laughs> Yeah, but dude, honestly, isn't MATLAB like so clutch? I wasn't really adept in. Oh, really? It, yeah. Like the reason I like it is because it has a nice user interface, and there's an amazing help, and you can visualize things and you mm -hmm. can plot things when not. Yeah. Versus if you're running C, like you're on your or like you're on your own. You're yeah, kind of like a, there's a lot of things you have to input in order to get like some yeah. sort of physical. Yeah, and dude, language. honestly, like I don't get how like some some schools as the very first programming language. They start you with C, which is brutal in my opinion. Like now, you like you've never programmed ever, and now mm -hmm. not only do you have to learn variables and functions, yeah. now you're gonna have to learn how to do like pointers and memory management, yeah, arrays and, and all this. Yeah, yeah, and like yeah, and then like all of a sudden like like. That and I'm just sure I'm sure there's like computer science people who are like that's easy stuff, but <laughs> you yeah. guys have probably been doing it no, since computer, you were dude, a, computer a lot younger. No, did computer science people like learn Java and like? 
think that's hard, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, dude, any E, we took C, C mostly, C++, yeah. I think. I'm not going to say I was the best at it, but I was exposed yeah. to it. Yeah, I think our school was more electronics focused, right? Like, we took a ton of electronics. The labs, yeah, we did a yeah, lot of Yeah, the labs were stuff. awesome. Yep. Like, the breadboards and the... Mm -hmm. Dude, hold on, I'm going to I'm gonna bring some trauma back. And that, I mean, the thing is that that was actually helpful with the work I do now. Yeah, did you remember this? Stuff from uh, what's his name? Oh yeah, yeah. Chewy. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, this class uh, was very <laughs> not the name drop. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, it's great, great professor. Um, yeah, this class, dude. This class is wild. Um, yeah, this class is wild. And then, and then it was kind of nice where you go in the lab and you just go and build things like that. You know. Yeah. Oh, uh, that was that was pretty cool. I thought like that was where like you felt like you were actually learning. Something. I think I didn't appreciate it at the time as much as I would appreciate it now. Yeah, because I this is the type of stuff I do. Except it's not a breadboard. It's yeah, you know, it's like it's actual... hardwired. Yeah, dude. I think it's because we were just so overwhelmed, man. Like we had so many classes, so many yeah, assignments. We can, yeah, we can. like and and you had to do a, re a report like write up for each one of these. Um, we couldn't. We didn't have the time to like appreciate mar it. I marinate. Yeah. Let that marinate in our brain is kind of weird. Yeah. There's, there's like I'm there's, panic mode constantly. Yeah, you're on, you're literally in flight or flight, fight or flight mode yeah. all the time. So you don't like. I, I also feel the same. Like I kind of look back, and there are a lot of classes where I'm like, man, I wish I spent more time like diving deep into this, but I couldn't. You know. Well, it was and the curriculum, and that's okay. The curriculum yeah. wanted to. Gr grad school was more chill. Like you get to kind of dive in deeper. You have fewer classes, and they're more interesting. And that's what I can say about the workforce, actually. Really? It was more chill. You were able to digest more knowledge. Huh. I felt like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mad knowledge. You, mad you, knowledge. You can edit that out, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't even know what it is. <laughs> Fix up audio on. <laughs> I mean, you spent you spent a pretty penny on that mic. So. Yeah, it's yeah, a, a great microphone. But yeah, what about the workforce? Um, you learn a lot. I think I think you learn a lot through through struggling, especially. Yeah, yeah. Because like work, you know, through interviews, I would ask a big question. I do ask in interviews is, mm -hmm. what is learning like? What's what's the teaching like? Is there room for you know growth, for yeah. knowledge? Any type of training, yeah. training is very, knowledge is very important to me. If I'm not learning, for example, at this job, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. If I'm not learning. Would you say the, the same point? about relationships? Yeah. <laughs> you know, growth, you gotta, you gotta grow. Yeah. 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 You like what grow. about, what about like people, you gotta grow together. Like people you surround yourself with in general, like not necessarily romantic relationships, but Just, friendships, coworkers. Yeah. Like, do, do you feel like ideally you surround yourself by people who kind of push you and help you grow? Of course. Your yeah. support system, people yeah. are growing with you or support you on their growth. Yeah. And of course, you know, you got to care for them too. How, care how, for their growth yeah. also. How, how important is that in college to have or people around you or f try to find people around you who push you and are trying to learn or trying to grow? It's important. It's yeah. just a different type of growth in college, I feel. Yeah. Sometimes, and of course, you have the professional growth, you know, people, you know, you yeah, study the, with, the but then... And but then you have, you know, you know, you got to be out in the world too. you got to enjoy yourself. Yeah, in college, yeah, yeah. it can't all just be work. You got to you got to go out in the world and you know, Meet make people. make make a few mistakes. Make, with, with some, <laughs> yeah. make, make a few mistakes with some really good friends. And then both you yeah, guys, yeah, yeah. you know, or all however amount of you guys are doing that grow yeah. together. It's part of life. That's, that's actually very good. I'm not going to approve or disapprove of this advice, <laughs> but I would say it is probably very good advice. You know, I would say, I would say if you're getting your work done and you're on top of your stuff, yeah, of then course. by all means, you should remember what your responsibilities yourself. are, but don't let it take over your life. Yeah. 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 I know some people are out there. Maybe you need it for a scholarship, your GPA, but yeah, but yeah, sometimes enjoy people, yourself. sometimes people find themselves on two opposite ends of the extra two, two opposite ends of the spectrum where you're either just going hardcore, like, hundred hours a week like mm -hmm. full elon mode or you're like doing absolutely nothing and you're just getting hammered right. every weekend right like where where in the spectrum would you would you say is ideal i mean balance excuse me balance is yeah. very important I, I i've always had that mentality yeah. in my in my mind i still have it to this day to this day is i don't let i don't let work take over 
life. You yeah. need to balance both professional and yeah, personal. Yeah, that is so important. And what's 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 funny is you will, through non-work related things, meet people who may help you with work related things. Like That's Dan, true. Dan, Dan, one of my best friends in college, mm -hmm. uh, we met in rock and roll history class. <laughs> And like, <laughs> what were you guys doing in rock and roll history class? Bro, honestly, like, it's insane. Bro, actually. literally just listening to music, like that class, the, the exam was he would play a bunch of songs uh -huh. from the era you study or whatever. Uh -huh. And you just got to guess the name of the song and the artist and the year. Uh -huh. And that's the exam, you know? It was just like the greatest class ever. Every single class, you just sit down, listen to music, and learn about it. I'm just so surprised, like, you and Dan were taking the same class. Yeah, didn't see each other before that. No, no, it's, it's, <laughs> and, and it's actually funny. Dude, this is how he met. That's hilarious. Is, I, I was, I was, he was, there was one day in class, I was sitting in the back, and there was a physics homework assignment, uh -huh. and it was due at midnight, and the class was late at night, and I was sitting there doing it in the rock and roll history class, and I glance over, and I see another kid who has his laptop pulled up, and there's the exact same <laughs> physics problem. And I like literally take my computer and like go over and I'm like, Hey, are you in physics 107? He's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yo, have you figured out this problem? He's like, no, no. And we just sit down and do it That's together. In class. Funny. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That's just crazy. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that's how you guys met. Yeah. I think you guys met through like, uh, no, no. Like a, one of the like e clubs e or EE e e courses no, or so, club. Yeah. yeah. So that's, what's crazy is, is, and then he told me about nanoset and he's yeah. like, yo, I'm doing this thing. You want so like that's wow, kind of that's a whole butterfly effect, it, dude. Exactly, you. dude. <laughs> exactly, dude. My whole life is a bunch of butterfly effects. That's you know? life in general. Yeah, life in like, general is a bunch of butterfly effects. Yeah, no, it's like that's a, like a lot of opportunities. I I mean I would work very hard in my classes in my labs and whatnot, but a lot of the people I would meet, that would then be like, oh, I'm doing this. Do you want to be part of it? Majority of the time, that was like not school or not not like engineering related at all you know mm -hmm. which is kind of funny and that's kind of a concept like he mentioned the butterfly effect i call it serendipity it's a very important concept in my opinion is to just kind of like do things and be open to like mm -hmm. to like try new things and go out of your way and just be open that this may or may not like um contribute to what you're doing but like you know i think that's kind of very that, that's a magical thing about life you know is, is you sometimes you I honestly even the way like I mean we met in lab mm -hmm. but we didn't really become close until we studied abroad you know <laughs> and that was like yeah, my we, life. Became, we became very close after that yeah I mean like when you when you're traveling with someone like that's you and that could have been a butterfly effect too because we almost yeah. we almost didn't live together because you were debating you're like should we you know be separated or should we yeah. you know live together and i think it was it was just out of we didn't choose yeah yeah we yeah. didn't we didn't choose eventually so yeah. we were practically homeless yeah. <laughs> we didn't have an apartment or like right, let's Lock just Pond let's just amazing. live together yeah yeah and it turned out well because we never had issues with each other we all had yeah. we all agreed on yeah and the classes things, things we were doing yeah the classes we took in spain were pretty interesting right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. cellular nice. Master level, yeah. No, it's yeah. It's, it's antenna classes. Antenna, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the space, the space communication one was good. Yeah, yeah. But but so like now now that you've gone through like what it's like to be an um like electric, electrical engineering student, mm -hmm. you've graduated, and now you're an engineer in the workforce. Mm -hmm. You've been working for like what four years, five years, five years, five years in the workforce. Five yeah. years. Like what, what is your view on like electrical engineering period? Are you glad you did the degree? Are you, do you feel like you learned a lot? Was it worth it? I think it's a lot of mix. It's a lot, a lot of emotions. I think in Hudson yeah. Valley, I did. So Hudson Valley, I started off as a, what's it called? The general arts, what's it called? Like a liberal like, arts, liberal that's what arts. I was, like okay. a general, like general studies, or general studies. Yeah. Sure. And then I was put into engineering because yeah. of my my apparently had ability in math uh -huh. in college yeah. in college i the thing is in high school i was cruising i didn't really care but in college i was paying for my for my studies so, so you're I, like, kinda, I, I took it actually, up a notch yeah, i was yeah, like yeah. oh i gotta get my money's worth you're like i gotta actually try yeah exactly and then they saw that my math scores were good my science scores were good and my physics from high school was good so i went into engineering but again it was still more general it was engineering mm -hmm. science which they put you in you know, civil, mechanical, yeah. project management, industrial stuff. So they kind of just give you a taste of each one. And my mentality was I'm going to do electrical because 
it's found in everything. Yeah. And then I remember taking my first circus yeah. class. And you're like, oh, <laughs> I no. was like, is this what I really want? You know, yeah. I have an existential crisis. But the thing is, I saw it through my boy. <laughs> I saw it through. Um, and I didn't like the one thing I didn't like were the actual classes, the lab. They were tough, but mm -hmm. I felt like I learned more during lab. Yeah, some of the theoretical classes are tough, right? Yes, yeah, very abstract at times. Yeah. Either super mathematical. Which class do you think was the hardest? That circuits class. That we took the the microelectronics circuits. Microelectronics. That was circuits. tough. That right? was tough because it was theoretical and yeah. mathematical, and there was so many circuits that you had to calculate for. That one was yeah. Yeah. Do you remember this uh, color scheme? The light blue. <laughs> yeah. This was the book that we used. It was uh, microelectronics oh circuits. Oh my goodness. Uh, it was made by this PTSD. guy. Yo, this guy's responsible for a lot of pain. <laughs> uh, Is that really the author? <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Bro, he's Egypt. He's from Egypt. Uh, he's from Egyptian. He's from Egypt. Wow. Isn't that wild? That, uh, that is insane. Yeah, but yeah, this is like uh, the really, problem. He really tortured a whole generation. Yeah, yeah. He's like second close to Isaac Newton. <laughs> like, yeah, it was a lot of these problems, you know. Yeah, that class. And then, oh, what killed me was the all the configurations, like the emitter follower. Yeah, and then, you know what I mean, like all like all the different configurations and the different classes. Uh, this is a tough class. It was fun. I I like those kind of problems, you know, where like it would give you a bunch of different mm -hmm. like variables, um, and then you would like that. That was kind of a bit more doable. Some of these derivations were, dude. Oh man, the Greek letters, yeah. like where it was talking about like the behavior of the transistor and things like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is a very very interesting um interesting class this is a very i mean this this textbook really is kind of the bible of an electrical or electronics engineering degree i would say um more easier is did you take circuit analysis uh, i think so yeah yeah this is a bit more chill this is kind of what you do in the beginning we just have some basic See, I, took, I think I, I took that in uh that's, Valley. Valley. that's when i was like what? like source current source yeah 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 yeah, blah, blah, yeah. Blah. yeah. Like, yeah, this current, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. See, that was easy. That's where yeah, it, start, yeah. it started off as yeah, that. Yeah, they start you and off, then, yeah. They start, they start you off with this. And they, then you had to go into a different realm. They, what was it? Yeah. The Diffy Q realm. <laughs> and you, you have to, oh, yeah. yeah. Good times. They, they warm you up with this. And then, like, you take um, RLC circuits, which is like, okay, things are starting to get weird. Now we're getting, like, right uh, equation. You're starting to do differential equations. Right. You know? Things are no longer changing at the same rate. Um, but again, it's cool. It's cool. You know, nothing's. And then all of a sudden, you're just hit with these transistor circuits. And... Yeah, circuit analysis was uh, something. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people complain about this class, signals and systems. That's that's a, that's a very abstract. Uh, this is my favorite class. It was more abstract because um, was... Fourier transforms. Yeah, but, lot... but you never found like a definite number. It was. Yeah, that class it was, was a very abstract. It's like here's your wave, and then yeah, like that pic picture right there, and then it's like put it in a yeah. black box, and then here's your output signal. Yeah, although dude, I would say this class single handedly changed my life. Like now I have a company called Next Level Systems, like just because I was so obsessed with this idea of like, I don't know, like that class just shifted how I see the world. Honestly, I I kind of like that class. It also caused a lot of pain. You know, did it? Yeah, I I think it did. I think I I, I, I comprehended that way more than the circuit analysis. Yeah. Um. Dude, the, I think the, the professor was good. Yeah. I forgot his name. Uh, was it a Greek guy? Was he Greek? Was he? I don't know. He had an accent. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think I think um. Yeah, he was a great. What was his guy. name? Do you remember his name? No, I don't remember anybody. Slovakis. Slovakis, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. great guy. Yeah, he was, he was a um, good professor. Dude, my least favorite class was this one, it was energy systems. The high power stuff? Yeah, it was just so boring. It was like, uh, it's, um, energy, or let's say, I don't know, power systems, maybe. Yeah, I, don't I know, forgot pretty, you were in that class with me. Dude, I literally only showed up, I, no joke, showed up to the midterm, uh, yeah. and I showed up to the final. Yeah. I think I showed up first day of class, too. I think you showed up first day of class, and I, and I was you, like, were, you were behind me at one point. Yeah, and I was, like, something. I was like, okay, yeah, this is, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cut. That's, that's, that's kind of another thing, is, um, I, there's a lot of classes I did not go to, and this is kind of a hot take, but I think if the professor is not great, and you're, like, genuinely not learning much in class, and you're not interested in the topic, like take the L and just go like do studying on your own for that. You know, that's kind of, that was kind of my approach, you know? Well, if 
attendance wasn't an issue. Was attendance an issue? I don't remember. I don't know. I probably it's been, it's been how many years? Yeah, yeah. Fuck. Yeah, I mean, it might have been like five. Dude, honestly, I, that class was probably so painful to me that I willingly took the zero for attendance just to not have to be part of it, you know? Because it was that new professor who was talking about economics and stuff. You remember? Uh, yeah, I think I know who you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Like, I don't know. So, some of your classes, like, sometimes you'll get really good professors. Sometimes you won't. It'll be a combination of you don't have good professors and you don't even care about that. Like, you just, you just know, I'm definitely not going to work in this field. Um, so my approach for that was take the L on that. And by, by taking the L, like, okay, I'm not saying go fail the class, but okay, instead of aiming for an A, I'm going to aim for like an A minus, maybe a B plus. And um, I'm just, I'm just going to spend, like, that's kind of another thing I, in college for me. Like the difference between an A and an A minus was like a lot of work, right? Like an A, um, you needed to really be on top of everything. But for an A minus, you just needed to kind of know the concepts, have a good understanding of what's going on. But you might miss things here and there, and that's okay. Like it took three times the effort for me to go from like an A minus to an A. So I was only gonna invest in the classes that I knew, like I really wanted to work on which are like communication systems signals and systems the things you like things you like yeah um things things i like i don't know this kind of this kind of different i know some people in some countries attendance is like i don't know like 30 percent of the grade or something so unfortunately you can't do that but like talk to me a bit about that like how much of your learning came from professors and how much was just kind of figuring things out on your own working with your friends and trying to learn things you know it depends on what aspect it was just class time that might not be enough it's a good introductory to new concepts yeah the key is you need to practice yeah do the for problem example, sets for example math the reason i was doing decent in math is because the professor would assign work was not mandatory yeah but i did them anyway he's like we, i recommend these problems it wasn't a lot of problems but he's like these are the ones i recommend and i would just try them out before the next class did you gotta sit down and and hammer through problem sets right and then back yeah. to your question about the professor it depends if you learning from a professor just from the class you might not pick up everything yeah but if you go to office hours that's yeah i i, I i'm not gonna lie i didn't always go to office hours but when i really had issues when i really just couldn't grasp a concept yeah i would be one of the first people there so yeah i was i was i was very like religious about office hours and ta office hours mm -hmm. low-key ta hours were like even more more like op than, than professors because sometimes the professors would be busy or they would be uh they'd have too many students or not the tas were kind of more in the trenches mm -hmm. ta stands for teaching assistant if you guys don't have them but they're basically like graduate students they usually help the professor and having a teaching assistant was kind of a hack because you can just go to a grad student and be like hey how do you how do you do this how do you do that how do you, can you help me with that can you help me with that um and then dude and then in some classes what i would do is i would go to the ta like ask all the questions i can and if something is still like i'm unsure about then i would go to the professor and then i would go to the professor having done something so the professor would be like right a lot more willing to help that's one thing also about professors and tas why not if they see you've put in some effort at least or you've attempted at like trying to solve the problem on your own they would be a lot more, more willing open. to help help right also in the workforce <laughs> in the work dude honestly even even i, I have plenty of examples for exa all right for so yeah. my company we work on the machines right mm -hmm. like you said electrical mechanical and software issue um so when i'm troubleshooting you know sometimes there's a point where you just you can't do any more things yeah so that's when i phone in a friend not actually friend but i phone 100%. in i phone in germany because these guys are you know they designed the machines yeah so i call them up and i give them a list of the things i tried it's like hey i tried this i tried doing this and if i have a list i have photos it makes it easier for them to give me you know to put me in a, in a path that might be yeah. the answer and that's that's interesting that you know 
you did that during that, dude, one, I mean, that's, university, and you still do it out of university. Dude, yeah. And that's, I guess that's life too, you know? Yeah. If you're going through something and you have a list of things that you tried, you can ask somebody, be like, hey, I tried this stuff. Do you have any yeah. advice? Dude, that is probably the most important skill in life, is like knowing when you need to ask for help mm -hmm. and who to go to for help. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to pay for that information, <laughs> you know? Yep. Um, and that's that is so important you know and and again when you go and ask for help and people have seen that you're 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 trying and you've put in the effort they're a lot more likely to help i mean i'm more I even, willing to help. yeah 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 like I, I i get comments sometimes or people in our discord server or whatnot and there's like two types of people one who's like hey i've tried this that this is what i've done this is where i'm trying to go mm -hmm. like what do you can you help me with this thing or like mm -hmm. And then there's the guy who's just like, give me the answers. Like, yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yo, um, yeah, give me some advice on this. And it's like, okay, like no context, no, it's no attempts, no right, anything, right. But, um, and this is a, this is a human thing. Like, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not saying like nothing against that person. But I'm saying from a like human nature, human tendency is, I want to help the first guy a lot more than right. the second guy because the first guy put in a lot more effort. And it's more productive. Yeah, yeah. Compared to not having information, you're just yeah. There's no context. You're not you're not gonna really get a good answer. You're yeah. just gonna get maybe the person's first thoughts. Like exactly. If there's no context, ninety nine percent of the time you will get the wrong advice. Like you'll get advice that is not applicable to your specific situation. Exactly. Uh, dude, when people ask me things like that, I'm just like follow your intuition. Like you know, <laughs> you know your situation better than I do. I gotta you know? see how many times you put that in the Discord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. But it's true. It's it's just you gotta you gotta try first. You gotta yeah. attempt things because it's not gonna be productive if you just ask for the answers. Yeah, because then you won't even know what context to apply the answers to. Right. Know? Like if you haven't gotten stuck in like stuck enough, you won't know exactly what it is that you're trying to solve. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, I think that's very good advice. So yeah, definitely learning how to ask people for help. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes it could be another thing. It's where it's like you could be stubborn. So that was. Kind of like how I was when I was younger. It took me a little bit to understand that it's important to ask yeah. for help because I, you know, I grew up as an only child. So a lot of times I'm like, I got to be able to find this on my yeah, own. Yeah, you have like. But the thing yeah. is, it's like, that's not life. How, how much? You're not going to know whoa. everything. Hold on, hold on. This is going to take, uh, this conversation is going to take a mean left turn. Uh huh. How much do you think does like personality and like life experience and upbringing mm -hmm. contribute to like, your success in engineering my personality yeah like you mentioned one trait is like you're stubborn mm -hmm. like don't you think that also was helpful and that you kind of would push through uh it's helpful in the way where it's uh yeah i don't i don't know when to quit <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's uh it helps again with troubleshooting because i'm like i need, i gotta find this answer yeah and i mean sometimes Dude, just, I would i'm argue, not gonna find that answer i would argue that's a very important skill in engineering because very often the rational thing to do is to give up, you know, but, but if you're stubborn, you're just going to keep going at it and eventually you'll solve the problem. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's helped in life, you know, it's, it's a, it's a gift and a curse. Yeah. You know, yeah. Just, just like whatever. Some doing. things it's gonna, it's going to hinder you in certain situations, but in other situations, like trying to figure it out. Yeah. And it's like trying to find root causes, whether it be at work or in life. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but what, what what personality traits would you say are important to succeed in engineering or electrical engineering or the workforce? Mm, open mind, definitely being open like to new to ideas, new concepts. Yeah, well, that's like the foundation of learning, basically, right? Yeah, be curious. Yeah. yeah, that's what I always try to be. Always try to be curious. Stay stay hungry, stay foolish. <laughs> I don't know if you see that. <laughs> Where stay Steve Jobs? Yeah, stay stay foolish is a big one. Yeah, it's essentially be curious. Yeah, don't be, yeah. don't be another t another. How do you say? What are you saying? Trait. Don't, trait. Yeah, is don't be scared to fail. Oh, we're that's gonna, a big we're one. We're gonna fail. That's, that's a big another one. that down to my stubbornness. Oh man, we know was, failure. <laughs> yeah, I was. I've always been afraid of failure. Sometimes that yeah. would that would keep you from trying things. But like, be foolish. Take that chance. Yeah. As long as it's not like a multi million dollar. <laughs> Mistake. yeah yeah don't don't but, you know it's it's yeah. it's uh what's it called um there's a word for it like calculated I, risks yeah yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like well my rule is as long as it's not fatal uh -huh. it's not gonna put right, you in jail right yeah 
be like, safe. If it checks off, okay, this is not going to kill me, and this does not break the law. Yeah. All, all else is fair game. Yeah, opinion, safety. You know? Safety is very yeah, important. Kind of Especially important. working high power. Safety. <laughs> yeah. Check that check before you before you do any work, always check with a multimeter. Yeah, yeah multimeter. You're reading. <laughs> but no, that's actually that's another thing that's not talked about because we live in this like guru age uh -huh. where everyone's just kind of flaunting their successes and uh, -huh. uh dude, we've like failed a lot. Yeah. It's like, part in all areas of life. Like we've struggled a lot, you know. Like there's so much struggle, so much pain, but none of that gets show obviously, like like in my case. People see, oh, the NASA job, the PhD, the a little do they know how much like suffering went went behind the scenes, how many failures, right? How many? I mean, my my first semester in college, I almost dropped out. It was just so hard. Um, like, how how important is that? Like, what is is it just the thing you learn from that, or is that the resilience, the personality traits you like? Talk a bit more about failure. Failures the best lesson if you can yeah if you're open to learning yeah and, and do you think like perfectionism kind of feeds into that where a lot of people are afraid of failing afraid of making a mistake right and that, that's you're gonna be perfect if you're not trying yeah new you think yeah you'll be like perfectly mediocre <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a lesson I had and to like learn. i said that yeah. was that was me i when i was younger i was afraid to to do newer things because i was afraid i was gonna fail yeah but as as i got older i understood that failure is just part of life yeah and as long as you take away some lesson from it because you can't don't be doing the same failure you know the same mistakes maybe one yeah. or two times maybe but try to learn from you know yeah absolutely faults absolutely and dude that's one thing dude that's one thing i learned at spacex like if there's one thing i learned from these guys is they would they would literally like intentionally like they would like if they had to build something mm -hmm. they were they would say we're gonna build the first version to failure mm -hmm. like they would build things with that goal of failure mm -hmm. so they knock it out of the way fast learn why it failed and then build a new one and iterate and right. whatnot and like that left such a big impact on me because here i was my entire life like afraid of failure and here are those engineers that are like we're gonna intentionally fail, right? And learn from the failure and whatnot, and 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 dude, even like um, when I watched the they Starship, em embrace failure. Yeah, yeah, and I and I think I mean props to Elon Musk for, for teaching the engineer and, and whoever the engineers that helped build SpaceX in the initial stages, like for a, like they are very good at installing that mindset into the newer engineers. Um, I mean, even I, I was I was only an interviewee and I kind of uh, took that, but. I think that's just very powerful. Even when I was watching their Starship launch, the first one, I mean, Starship like blew up almost instantly as soon as I took off. Um, and a lot of magazines and a lot of news articles were like, oh, that was a failure. Like they didn't, but everyone at Space SpaceX was cheering on because they, what mattered to them was not whether the rocket made it to orbit or, or not, is that it made it past a certain point certain and they're going to, yeah, yeah, and then they're going to learn what not, you know? So if there's one thing, um, people should learn from this conversation, which I, I've experienced in, in my life as well is like, you should uh, almost do things almost with the intention of, of failing initially. So you can just remove that pressure. Like that's kind of a big challenge. I'm, I'm, I'm noticing with, and this is a big challenge I had as a student as well is so much pressure mm -hmm. paralyzes you. Mm -hmm. Like where you're like, Oh, I gotta get it right. I gotta get the job. I gotta get the internship. Mm -hmm. Like it, that kind of energy just kind of, paralyzes you don't you think yeah yeah and the worst i think the worst is when you don't achieve any of those yeah Which happened to me i didn't have i couldn't find an internship for the longest time yeah i couldn't find a job you know right away so what was what was that like like when you graduated and you're like okay no internship no job lined up like t walk me walk me through the experience i'm guessing it was stressful it was stressful and it was very um i don't know what the word is it's like <laughs> is that <awesome? laughs> it was what's the word <laughs> oh man what's the word where it was like what is the word discouraging 
Oh. It was very discouraging. Because it was like, it was not what you had expected, right? No, because I was being told, you know, your engineering degree, this is, I mean, originally I was probably going to be a history major. I love history. Okay. That's probably what I would have done. But yeah. I was told, it's like, you know, you got to do something that. STEM, yeah. Something Dude, I, that I, I will like find a you a job, which was like the key yeah. word. And then, you know, having my whole reality almost shatter because I'm not having a job. You're like, I did this thing for the job. <laughs> and, 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 and you showed me there's yeah. no job. Yeah, what? exactly. So <laughs> it was, it was like tough. you had mean trust issues from that. <laughs> yeah, it, it did mess with me a lot. Yeah. It really so messed with me. How long did it take from. Graduation? So I was able to find a random uh, internship for a little bit, paid internship. Thank you, thankfully, because I, I needed, I can't just do like yeah, 40 yeah. hours and not get paid because yeah, you know bills have to be paid <laughs> um but i was also doing believe it or not i was doing odd jobs yeah i have the thing is my mentality has always been working okay so you know i would do my regular job and i would do job searches eventually i did the and internship job searches are tough huh yeah it's a full-time job in itself you have to make your resume you got to skew it to each company yeah. and they need a cover letter. That's a whole nother thing. Um, references. It's a well, lot of well, logistics. Now, now there's chat GPT for that. You know? Oh, back in the day, we didn't have that. I, I haven't tried it yet. Yeah. <laughs> no, dude, chat GPT is so wild. Uh -huh. Like you want, you want to see something crazy? They help with uh, ref references. Dude, like, no, dude, honestly, when I saw this shit, like my mind's blown. Like, write me a cover letter for an electrical engineering internship. In the area of let's say embedded systems i uh, mention how i have experience with electronics dlcs and other stuff <laughs> you should beef it up and <laughs> add some cool technical terms without making it sound jargony and bro watch Like, isn't this crazy? What? Know, isn't this crazy? Wow. This is kind of wild, right? Yeah. And honestly, dude, when I read these, like, those are pretty good, you know? And now, and dude, you, like, here's where it gets crazy. And you're like, like, rewrite it. Now, do you have it. to pay for this? Oh, uh, no, this is the free version. Like, you're like, rewrite it to make it a bit funnier while still uh, maintaining, like, professionalism, you know, or something mm -hmm. like that. And then, like, look, it starts with, like, a story or something like that, you know? Yeah. It's just, like, um, I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's just wild, That's insane, yeah. yeah. it's just, it's just And wild. the thing is, you know, those resumes, those are all scanned by an AI, so. Yeah, and exactly. And it's, like, and, and dude, what you can do is so you can. I, I wouldn't even feel bad because it's not an actual person reading this stuff, dude, unfortunately. What, what one thing you can do is you could also, like, I don't know, let's say electrical engineer. You could literally find the keywords and you can sprinkle them. Like, you could take this and say. Right. All right, like literally say, um, rewrite with adding the following keywords in the letter. And then you just put that and bam, like now it goes back AutoCAD with my besties. You know? With my besties? <laughs> yeah, dude, so it's crazy. I mean, wow. like obviously only do this for shit you've actually done. Otherwise uh -huh. in the interview, you're gonna look very ridiculous. Uh -huh. But the idea is this is wild. Like yeah. we didn't have this and dude, even like on LinkedIn, like you could say, write me, write me a script for outreach on LinkedIn, aim to get engineering hiring managers to take a look at my resume. And then it would like say, Hey, I hope blah, blah, blah. You know, obviously this is way too long, but dude, this is where it gets magical condensed by 50%. Like this shit is just amazing. Wow. You know? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, it's um i don't know it's, i've never i never used it that's why i i don't really use it either dude where i really use it mm -hmm. that's like really really underrated is like when you're learning stuff so like okay dude like for example what do you do so you said like pl you work on plcs yep. like what is a plc and it's going to give you an answer stands for blah blah so then i say okay which applications is plc used in you know and then it's going to tell me like that oh these kind of applications blah blah and then I say, okay, um, how is PLC different from, I don't know, microcontrollers? And then it's gonna answer your questions and it's gonna tell you the difference. So like, this is actually a very underrated learning tool. Yeah. Where like, instead of Googling it and watching a YouTube video or not, yeah. you can have a chat. Right. You know what I mean? About and having your specific 
question. Yeah, answer. exactly. And then, for example, you mentioned there's an Ethernet. Why does PLC use Ethernet? You know, um, high speed communication, scalability, blah blah things. So it's kind of it's kind of nice because the way it's like uh, organized. Yeah, and and do it again, and do it, and do it. Oh, here's where it gets crazy. Like sometimes when I read this, I'm like, what is this? I say like, condense this and rewrite it, like I am four years old. God. People use Ethernet with PLCs because it helps them talk really fast to each other. Like how you talk fast with your friends when you're excited. Like, dude, isn't this amazing? This is insane, no. Like, and, and dude, believe it or not, dude, what I do is I go and I, I go and I find like papers I need to read. I don't know, let's say for example, this paper. Uh, and sometimes if I find like a really dense uh, section in the paper mm -hmm. that I don't like want, like that just giving me a headache, like, I don't know, let's say, for example, um, yeah, let's go back. Like, let's say, I don't know, this, um, let's say this part of, let's say this introduction, right? It's pretty intense, right? With all sorts of terminologies, why not? Let's say you're a complete stranger to this topic. You could say, um, summarize the following text and rewrite it like I am in fourth grade. And dude, here's the crazy part. Like, scientists want to make really cool gadgets to explain space. That's basically probably like the first three things, you know? Mm -hmm. And then they use something called a Schottky diode, which does X, Y, Z. Now they made better. They're, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and this is, because then when you, dude, when you read this and then you go back and read that, mm -hmm. like suddenly this makes way more sense. Right. Because now you have context, you know? Right. That's um, insane. But yeah, honestly, like ChatGPT is... Uh, it's very underrated for research, in my opinion. For education. Or, yeah, yeah. I think it's like it's like a very and dude, as you can see here, I have all sorts of, um, like all sorts of folders. Yeah, like we're here. I'm 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 literally having it like whip out equations and stuff, and like I'm I'm having a discussion with ChatGPT on. Like, so you can save these for future. Yeah, so they reference. stay in your search history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just, it's uh. It's, it's very very cool you know and you could you could use it i like you could use it for for um i don't know for any anything you want and even if you say like i'm starting an engineering club focused on lasers can you suggest 10 names and then it'll give you like i don't know like things like that you know it's just i don't know it's just it's, it's very cool yeah uh laser tech titans that's funny. Beam Blazers Guild. <laughs> Dad Force United. <laughs> that's insane though. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of cool, right? But yeah, anyway, I think like that's kind of another thing we will see is with technology developing, like there are tools to help people apply for jobs and do things of that nature. You yeah. know. You look you look amazed. Yeah, I need to play with this more often. Yeah, it's pretty cool, right? Yeah. I mean I've known about it. I've seen a bunch of videos about yeah. it, but I've never really used it. Yeah, I think I think it's pretty crazy, man. It's uh, yeah, it's uh. Bye, man. I I I I think uh, do you have any closing remarks? Do you have any advice for young people, engineering students, high school students? Stay curious. Yeah. Stay curious. Balance. Stay curious. <laughs> so just follow your curiosity. Yeah. Like think about what. Yeah, just be open to stuff. You never know what you'll find out. Life is like we discussed serendipitous yeah. it's a butterfly effect you never know what is going to happen that's the beauty of life so yeah absolutely so you're saying you're against like planning hardcore five <laughs> years ten ten year plan five year plan. i'm not against but, it yeah you know that's that's the uh, you know I, I like to think logically but yeah. i don't i don't personally i don't do that yeah i, 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 I don't i don't do that i think either. i think because you know every time i i have these five-year thoughts something happens back, and it's, it's shattered right it's not even shatters just life takes a different direction yeah it's yeah, kind of yeah. just for me it's like i just you know yeah. just living so stay curious focus on the first step in front of you yeah yeah do you have any advice on like phone usage social media <laughs> uh, is that stuff useful is it a waste of time uh it can be productive if you find you know the right stuff but be weary of misinformation yeah um try to control your your screen time yeah track way. track your screen time if it's if it's infringing on you know your relationships and your work then yeah 
should uh, definitely control it. Have your home screen like mine, where screen time is in your face at all times. <laughs> And now you're like, whoa, I spent two hours on my phone today. What am I doing in my life? Uh, but yeah, all right. Closing remarks. Very last statement. No. Thank you for having me, Discord. Yeah. Hopefully I'll be back soon. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully the robot has another issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you, can, so you can stay in your job. Yeah, so I can like come back. Like if all the robots worked perfectly, you'd be out of a job. Yeah, so I could come back. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. I think that wraps it up. What? Homeboy over here. Have Miguel. a good night. Sleep well. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys in another one of those. Remember, hydrate, drink water. Hydrate, <laughs> drink water, and stay curious. Peace, love.